What would a sort of an all hands on deck approach look like from the, a military perspective? I hear that they are involved a little bit, but actually taking over this operation. What what would it look like? Well, the, the Navy earlier this year had been given overall control for dealing with the, the small boats crossing the channel. Um, but as um, pre previous speaker said, it's very difficult indeed. You, know, the, you have to look at um, uh, saving lives first and foremost. You can't do anything to endanger people. Um, and uh, that's why we're seeing boats picking up the migrants and actually taking them further across because it's saving their lives. The military have been involved in this. Um, the border force have got sufficient resources uh, and the police forces in the areas where the migrants are coming in have got sufficient resources to be able to police it um, and police the border situations that's there. It's a very small number of beaches that these individuals are landing on. And of course, the military have been providing support under, I think the code name for the operation is Operation Isotrope for some time. Uh, and the army has been helping with with using its unmanned surveillance vehicles, um, the watchkeeper, uh, and the navy have been providing patrol boats to beef up the border force patrol boats um, and uh, to increase their surveillance so that they can identify the small boats that are coming across, look at where they're going to land. You've got lots of time to plan a reception committee. And having looked at the reports on David Neal's report, most of his criticism was about the processing after people um, came into the UK and were held in the, um, the uh, refugee facilities, not the fact that they were coming in. Mm. But then even that part of it, perhaps then we could look at the army taking over that because it's not working, is it? I mean, you know, this, he, he talked of 57 who ran off, two thirds of which they had no data on. What, how, how is that? Why did they not? Yeah. Process them? What, what, what's going and, on? and again, the, the, you know, the, the, this, this is out to contractors, and this is where the contracts are. The army could come in and do it. It's a very expensive way of doing it. Um, you know, the army is used to processing large numbers of, of people, um, and if a surge capacity was needed, I'm sure those those plans are in place. The, you, the, it's interesting when you look at the numbers that run off. You know, these are supposedly individuals who are coming in to seek asylum in this country. They know perfectly well that um, when they get on shore, if they if they get processed, um, a large majority of them will be granted asylum. Those that run off clearly don't want asylum. Um, mm -hmm. They have come in for other reasons. Uh, and this is why I think the government policy of trying to push people back, um, you know, the French aren't patrolling the borders in the way that they should do. There should be, I agree with um, the former head of the border force that there should be joint patrols in France to try and stop this. But it's serious and organized criminals that are making huge amounts of money. Um, mm. And it's, it's them that are pushing these people forward. And they're pushing them forward, A, because they can get lots of money out of them, or B, that they're sending people in to be exploited either as um, uh, drug mules or for other human trafficking reasons around the country. And those are a lot of the people that disappear or are disappeared. They're taken away by the organized crime in the UK. And therefore, it's dealing with that. It's taking the incentive away for mm. individuals to go into organized crime and taking the incentive for organised criminals away by arresting them. And there have been a couple of major arrest or, uh, operations recently.